Hi, good morning. I'm teacher Margaret from the Basson Room and I get to read stories with you today, which is super exciting. So our first book that we are going to read is called No Hugs for Porcupine and it's one of my favorites. So let's get started. All right. No Hugs for Porcupine. Poor Porcupine couldn't be hugged. The forest animals who loved hugging each other twittered behind Porcupine's back. He's too prickly, said the fawn. He's so grumpy, said the rabbit. Moose, fox, beaver, and owl agreed. Who could ever hug Porcupine, exclaimed Otter. I don't need a hug from any of you, Porcupine shouted into the echoing forest. But he wanted one. It was no hugs that made Porcupine grumpy. He craved a cuddle. He needed a nuzzle and he searched for a snuggle. Dust crept over the forest. All the animals said their good nights, giving each other warm bedtime hugs before they returned to their burrows, nests, and logs. All but Porcupine. He sulked off to his corner of the forest and settled on his rock. Hi, Charlie. Giving his quills a quick shake, he tried to wrap his little arms around his body. Ouch, he cried. Even Porcupine couldn't hug Porcupine. He felt extra grumpy. Porcupine picked up one of his quills from the mossy ground. Perhaps I can do something about these, he thought. He tried shaking again, harder this time. Only a few quills fell off. He tried rubbing his back against a tree to blunt the spikes, but his quills were as so sharp as ever. Oh no. Maybe I can cover myself in moss. Hi, fine family. Porcupine gathered the softest moss he could find. He lumbered over to his brick and peered at his reflection. You look silly, said a voice. Porcupine turned and spotted Armadillo. He dropped the moss to the ground. That's much better, he said. It's not much better, said Porcupine, grumpier than ever before. I won't ever get a hug now. Cheer up, Porcupine. Would you like a kiss instead? A kiss? What's a kiss? May I have one, please, asked the Porcupine. It's good that he's asking permission. Mwah! and the armadillo pecked a quick kiss on the porcupine's little nose. There, he said, that's a kiss. Porcupine felt happy and warm and not the least bit grumpy. He wanted to show all the forest animals this kiss, but was afraid they would not give him a chance. Don't worry, said the armadillo. We can show them together. Okay, mumbled Porcupine nervously, and they made their way back through the forest. Hi, Sherry. And they're making their way through the forest. Where did you go, Porcupine? The animals cried. We have missed you. I was sad, Porcupine muttered, because you said I couldn't be hugged. It's not that we don't want to hug you, said Fawn. We're just afraid of your quickly quills. Armandillo said, well, in that case, Porcupine, he could give you a kiss if you want, because porcupine kisses are not prickly. A kiss, said Rabbit, twitching his nose. May I have one, please? Said Otter, bounding up to the porcupine. It's so nice. They're all asking for permission, too. Hi, Gabriel. Sure, said porcupine. Mwah! That wasn't prickly at all, said Otter. In fact, it was very nice. Porcupine smiled. I want a kiss too, whispered Fawn. So do I, said Rabbit. All the forest animals asked Porcupine if they could also have a kiss. So he very carefully planted pecks, kissed cheeks, and nudged noses. So nice. 
Dawn broke over the forest and all the animals said their good mornings, giving each other quick sweet kisses after rising from their burrows, nests, and logs. All but poor owl. Wonder why not the owl? Hmm. Uh, no, there he is. We just got a little late start. The end. That was such a nice book. We learned that the porcupine could in fact have affection instead of not giving hugs, he could give kisses with permission, of course, which was awesome. So if you're interested in this book, it's called No Hugs for Porcupine. Are you guys ready for our next book? All right, good. Here we go. So our next book is called You Belong Here. And it's one of my favorites. Let's get started. You Belong Here. The stars belong in the deep night sky, and the moon belongs there too. And the winds belong in each place they blow by. And I belong here with you. The whales and the fishes belong in the sea, and the waves belong by the shore. And the dunes where the grasses belong to be, because grasses are what dunes are for. Hi, teacher Melissa. And the trees belong in the wild wood and the deer belong to the shade. And the birds belong so safe and good and warm in the nest they've made. And you belong where you love to be. And after each day is through, you will always belong right next to me and I will belong to you. Oops, pages are stuck, you guys. Here we go. The frogs and the lilies belong in the lake where the water is silver and clear. And the turtles belong in the homes they make in the sand where the water is near. And the otters belong by the banks of the stream and the cat tiles belong there too. And the cart belong where the water runs green and the shadows all run blue. And you belong right here where you are home and where I hold you close. Of all the wonders I've ever known, you're the one I love the most. They're home just like we are. The hares belong in the desert air where the rocks are red and gold. And those rocks belong with the comets out there which flash bright when the night turns cold. The foxes belong in the high cannon hills and the sage there belongs in the sun. And the lizards belong in the light sitting still until they are ready to run. So oh, nice. The crickets belong in the old stone wall and the bees belong in the clover. Just as winter belongs in its place after fall before the new year starts all over. Hi, teacher Caitlin. And you are a dream that the world once dreamt and now you are part of its song. That's why you are here in the place where you are meant for this is right where you belong. The pines belong on the mountain sides tucked under their blankets of snow and the bears belong in the caves where they hide wherever the storm, storms start to blow. Hi, Andrea. Some creatures were made for land or air and others were made for sea. Each creature is perfectly home right there in the place where it belongs to be, just like you and me. And no matter what places you travel to, what wonder you choose to see, I will always belong right here with you and you will always belong right here with me.
The end. It was a really pretty story. And they're right at home where they should be, which is great. So we're going to get started on our third book. All right. So oh, you guys, I have been craving pancakes with lots of syrup, but I haven't been in the store yet for this week. So that's on my list of things to do. But I thought we could read about some pancakes and French toast and get that fixed that way. Sound good? All right. So this is called Lady Pancake and Sir French Toast. Here we go. Deep in the fridge and behind the green peas was past the tofu and left with the cheese. Up in the corner and back by a roast, that lady pancake besides Sir French toast. The leftover friends were as close as could be until they heard the news from their neighbor, Miss Bree. The syrup is almost completely gone. A single drop's left. Just a drop, she went on. Uh-oh. The last drop is mine, Lady Pancake conversed, but French Toast replied, and not if I get there first. Like that, he was off, and the race had begun, with Pancake behind breaking into a run. Uh-oh. I wonder who's going to get there first, you guys. Through Broccoli Forest, past Orange Juice Fountain, they climbed to the top of the Potato Mash Mountain. Pushing and shoving, they fought for the lead. Toast behind Pancake, who rolled at high speed. <laughs> she screeched to a stop at the edge of the shelf, clutching a grapevine to steady herself. Toast didn't notice and couldn't quite stop, plummeting down into the jam with a plop. Oh boy, he's probably all sticky now. He scraped himself off and yelled, you're a meanie, as Pancake repelled down a rope of linguine. She bragged, I'm the best of all breakfast food treats, and then hurdled a lime and skipped over to beef. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I am, thought Toast, but his chances looked bleak. So Toast took a shortcut down sauerkraut peak, skiing past spinach and artichoke dip, Toasted, vaulted high in the air with a flip. Nearing the edge, he tried one final jump, but stumbled and fell way below with a thump. Uh-oh. Pancake made use of her seafaring skills and sailed across oceans in soup-causing spills. The chilly lagoon slathered Pancake in muck, and then at a fork in the road, she got stuck. Anyone else been stuck before? I don't know. Don't go that way, yelled a chickpea to warn her. But Pancake sped on and got trapped in a corner. Caught behind dressings, one Russian, one ranch. She squeezed out and started. A bean, avalanche! Oh, all the beans are falling now. It's an avalanche. Oh, goodness gracious. Toast reemerged in the vegetable crisper, sneaking up swiftly, making not even a whisper. Beans were now falling from such a great height. Some kidneys, some lima, some pinto, some white. <gasps> oh my. Searching for safety from the raining legumes, Toast turned to hide, but was blasted by fumes of Brussels sprouts left from an old pantry platter. So quickly he climbed the celery ladder. That is very true. Brussels sprouts that are old do not smell very good, you guys. <laughs> Beside him, a lettuce leaf parachute landed. Pancake flipped out. It's mine, she demanded. Batter and soggy, exhausted and crumbling. Too tired to push, they were limping and stumbling. Oh my goodness, they are probably so exhausted. <gasps> They stood the bottle of syrup at last, but wait, it's empty. They stood quite aghast. <gasps> they did all of that. It doesn't even look like there's any more syrup. Oh no. Licking his lips with a smear that was awful. Out of the shadows, crap, barren, long, waffle. I got here first while you boasted and bickered. My, was that syrup delicious, he snickered. 
the little waffle got there first. I didn't even know he was in the race. That's a surprise. <laughs> With one evil laugh, ha ha ha. The waffle slipped out of sight and the syrup was gone. No more reason to fight. Trudging back home beneath layers of grime, Toast said, perhaps we should not fight next time. That sounds like a good idea. <laughs> Agreed, replied Pancake. As friends, we should share. Hey, look, we can split up that butter right there. Look, they're working together. We're going to split that butter. Very nice. Oh, look at that. The end. And they are all happily living in harmony, it looks like, in the great refrigerator. Isn't that lovely? All right. So I think we have time for one more book, if you want. And I think we do. So our last book is called Bobo and the New Baby. And so I just had a baby five months ago, and I actually have two little dogs that look exactly like Bobo. And it was quite an adjustment bringing home baby Theo to my dog, Leroy and Ellie. So we're going to learn how Bobo did today with this new baby. All right. So Bobo and the new baby. This is Bobo. Bobo likes his life. He likes to snooze. He snoozes on the sofa. He snoozes in the bathtub. And he snoozes in the laundry basket. He likes to chase. He chases birds and he chases butterflies and he chases the mailman. Mm -hmm. Until one day, Mr. and Mrs. Lee come home with their, uh-oh, sitting at the door. <gasps> a baby! Bobo has never seen a baby before. And he circles and he barks and he jumps. That is exactly what my dog used it when I brought home my baby. Stop, Bobo. You will scare the baby, says Mr. Lee. Mm -hmm. Poor Bobo. Bobo walks away. Bobo looks a little sad. Huh. Bobo wants attention, but not now, Bobo. Baby is eating. Not now, Bobo. Baby is changing. Not now, Bobo. Baby is sleeping. Not now, Bobo. Baby is crying. Oh. Poor Bobo. Bobo watches and waits and waits and waits. He is so patient. Waiting is really hard, even as a grown-up. But then, buzz, 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 there's a bee! Oh no. Bobo barks at the bee. He chases it around the house. He will not let it hurt that baby. Oh, Bobo's in protector mode. Good for Bobo. Oh, he's chasing the bee. You can see it at the top of the page. Is he going to get it? I hope he doesn't get hurt. Let's see. Stop, Bobo. No running in this room. You will hurt the baby, says Mr. Lee. And Bobo is in the dark, and he just looks so sad. Poor little Bobo. Wait, darling. There's a bee. Bobo just wants to help, says Mrs. Lee. I'm so sorry, Bobo, says Mr. Lee. Bobo, do you want to say hello to the baby, asks Mrs. Lee. Hmm, misunderstanding right there, you guys. Let's see. Bobo looks at the baby, and he looks sweet. He looks happy, and he looks just like the leaves. Oh, he just stuck. All right, guys. There we go. <laughs> and Bobo knows that he will love him. And there they all are, one. Hey, my small family. There you go. So that's how Bobo did with his new baby, which I think he did great. So you guys, thank you so much for joining us. And be sure to join us tomorrow for ECS story time with teacher. Laura Selby. So be sure to tune in, okay? All right. So it was so nice to see you. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and we'll see you later. Bye.